Alright guys, so here's uh, most of the big pieces with the exception of uh, just a few kind of thruster parts and stuff. They're still over there in the box and the uh, all of the funnels here. But here's basically what we've got and it's time to do a bit of weathering and decals. Now in this video I just want to focus on the weathering we're going to be doing for this kit and it's going to be very simple and basically uh, what you need to know about weathering is that there's about a million different ways uh, to weather and there's just so many different kinds of techniques using different kinds of paint or not even paint, I mean just using different kinds of um, ink or even pencil a lot of things, I don't know, there's so much, you guys, I recommend you should go uh, and watch some other tutorials. There's a lot of great tutorials about weathering out there. And look outside of uh, like stuff for Gumpla. Look at some like weathering tutorials for other scale models like tanks and aircraft and stuff like that because, I mean, basically a lot of the same rules still apply for Gumpla as well. So I uh, definitely recommend you guys take a look at that. Um, today we're basically just going to be doing a little bit of chipping, which is really simple. Basically, uh, let's move this stuff, some stuff out of the way. Some things back over here in the box. Rifle there. Alright, this binder is going to be a good starting point for us. And basically what I want to do is just make it look like there's some chipping around some edges that kind of where it makes sense where uh, the edge would be colliding with something or with itself. Like for example armor here where the armor is close and you can imagine it probably be touching itself at times just during normal movement. So we want to make it look like the paint on those edges is a little bit chipped. So basically uh, I'm just going to go, since all the inside and except for the brown frame. The other parts were painted with uh, German Grey, Tamiya German Grey. That's what I'm going to use for the dark color. We actually need two, you don't need, but I guess uh, kind of looks better from what I've seen and from what I've tested uh, to have a darker color and then a lighter color. Uh, basically just to give it some uh, texture as well. So I'm just going to use the dark uh, darker color, which is German Grey first, and remember to shake it. And once again, I only need a really little bit of paint. I'm going to take a little bit more than I need and then just uh, kind of wipe a little bit extra on there, so I'm sure I've only got just a tiny bit. And basically what we're going to do is just touch it onto the edge just a little bit, so... And there you can see we've got just a kind of worn look on the edge. Looks like there's some paint chipped off on the corners there. Uh, I'm going to need to do some more work and obviously to go around. I, with weathering it's really easy to overdo it so just make sure that you just intentionally underdo it at first and then you can always add more. So. I'm just going to go to some of like the more extreme corners. I'm not going to go and do it like all along this line and just like all along the edge everywhere. Going to try to keep it mostly just to kind of the corner areas on here and then again on the parts. Other parts just keep it to oops, somewhere where it makes sense that there would be some uh, chipping. So like, I don't know. if you really want to make it worn, you can make it look like there's chipping on like every single corner, but I don't want to do it that much, so like just somewhere like here, this spot, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of rubbing because there's nothing that, that would be rubbing against, so I'm not going to be a whole lot of chipping there. 
just things like that. Anyway, just try to keep that in mind. I'm gonna go and do some more with just this dark gray on some more parts, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we're gonna use the lighter gray as well. So hang on just a minute. And, okay, so this piece is now pretty much done. I'm gonna be careful not to touch any of those areas just because the paint is still a little bit dry. Uh, not dry, but you can see it's just got a little bit of a textured look around those edges. Looks really good, really pleased with that. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and do this for basically the rest of the kit. It's gonna take a little while, but um, it's just kind of necessary. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you guys how it's looking. All right, so I've got a couple pieces here that are all done for the darker gray and I wanna show you how we're going to use the lighter gray. But before I do that, there's just one thing also that I wanna add. If you take a look here, um, like I said in a previous video, this kit, I'm actually, once I'm finished with it, I'm gonna be giving it to my Japanese friend, and that's uh, my friend Akagai Tamori. Uh, as I've talked about him in a past uh, Gumpla News video, and I showed you guys some of his kits and stuff, and as I told you, he's an illustrator as well. And um, in his illustrations, he's often using like some symbol of like uh, just like two kind of eyes. So I wanted to add that somewhere on this kit, uh, just because it's kind of like his kind of trademark. Um, so basically what I did is just lay out a piece of masking tape and just cut out the shape. And I just need to stick that on the kit. And then just I'm just gonna brush a little uh, black paint on top of that. I could just paint the symbol just entirely by hand because it's pretty simple. But I just thought I'd do it like this just to show you guys uh, what you can do if you want to just do something using masking tape. I think I'm gonna stick it like here, I think on the side of the leg. Just want to put that there. Like that. Make sure that's stuck really well around all the edges. And add parts Something like that and these aren't like perfectly precision cut either but uh, that's kind of what I want I want it to kind of look like like it was like hand painted on the suit basically. So there we go. Uh, sorry, focus that up. That's on there. I'm just gonna take some black paint. Some flat black here. And just paint in there. Now that I've actually started, I'm wondering if maybe another color would have been better, uh, more interesting instead of black, but uh, I don't know, I guess. Black is fitting because in all of his illustrations it's always black because he's, for the most part, only using black and white anyway, so that could be the reason why, but might as well keep it close to the uh, style that it's usually drawn, right? So. As you can see, I'm more like 
dabbing the paint now instead of brushing it because uh, for one reason is that like, if I brush it, I might be actually brushing the paint up underneath the tape, which I want to avoid doing. I want to try to keep it in the tape. I pressed, I tried uh, to press the tape down pretty well. And also uh, just want to keep it from having any brush strokes so that it looks pretty loose. That should do it. Go ahead and let that dry for a second. I'll clean my brush. And we can take the tape off. Trying to get this off with these very sharp tweezers without scratching the paint underneath. And there we go. Anyway, um, for the lighter gray now, Okay, why don't we go back to the first part that we did. Uh, and basically, this is just going to add some texture uh, by making it look like kind of area where the paint is chipped. Uh, that dark color basically looks like the paint is chipped all the way down to the uh, armor, like the actual metal underneath. But we want to make some just tiny little accents there to make it look like where there's area was where it's just chipped to the primer. So uh, that's why we're using this lighter gray. And we only need to do this uh, in not as much as the darker gray, it's just basically kind of a little bit around the areas where there's a lot of the darker gray. So like this corner here, there's a lot of that uh, dark gray, so I can just add a little bit of light gray just around the edge of that. And it's gonna be pretty hard to see on cameras. It's actually pretty hard to see like in real life as well, just because this uh, light gray is so similar to the color of the armor. But you can see a very slight difference. And uh, like later when we're taking some like high res photos and stuff, you can see how um, you're gonna be able to see a little bit more texture in that chipping rather than just the dark part. So that's pretty much it, uh, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and do this uh, all over the kit. It's going to take a little while, but it's not too bad. And it definitely, I'm definitely really pleased with the results uh, thus far. I'll have to see once it uh, once it goes all together. A little bit concerned. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but just a little bit concerned that once it goes, once it all goes together, I might actually think that it's actually too much. But just looking at that on there, it doesn't look like all that much and it looks pretty good, I think so. Uh, basically, I'll show you what everything's gonna be looking like once this is all done. So give me a moment. All right, now for this leg, I've got all the chipping done and uh, I tried putting this part on just to see how it would fit after I uh, filed some of the paint and top coat off of this part here that's going inside just so it'll fit better. Just to check the fit, I tried it on and uh, it scratches, I realized that it scratches some of the paint around this part on this uh, inside kind of frame part there. So I added some chipping on there just so that it looks, uh, just so that once probably gonna scratch the paint more but at least with that chipping on there it's gonna look a little bit like intentional so and it's actually quite tight on there probably could get away with not gluing it but I am gonna put a little drop of super glue on there just to be sure it's extra strong uh, this is just regular 
super glue. I think you can use pretty much any super glue you want. Uh, at this point, I would not use this glue, this extra thin cement, because this will definitely, if you use just a little bit, it should be okay. But uh, if you use too much of this and some of it runs down, it's going to ruin your paint. This stuff just eats through paint like crazy. The problem with super glue is that it fogs paint a little bit. Um, so like the paint around the area where you put the super glue will end up getting fogged. But this is going inside so it should be okay. Shouldn't really be any problem. I just want to add just a little bit uh, on there and a little bit on the top. Not a lot, and I want to slide that on pretty quickly. Oh no. And if you guys saw that, like what I was afraid of, what happened was it actually split these parts a little bit. Pressing them back together uh, looks like I've gotten away with the, you shouldn't really notice it, but where we removed that seam line, it actually broke apart a little bit, so sadly, that's too bad. Hopefully you're not going to be able to see it, you can see it a little bit more on this side, but man, oh, that stinks. Broke that apart a little bit. So I don't know, stuff happens, hopefully you're not going to be able to see it all that well. Not really a whole lot I can do about it at this point. I really don't want to have to sand down and like totally redo this part. Um, that would be the right thing to do in this situation, but um, just really not going to. So, uh, but anyway, that's what the leg is going to look like. And when all that is said and done, here's what we have. I've got all of the uh, chipping done in the dark gray and light gray all over the kit and the weapons as well. For the rifle, I'll just go ahead and show you that first. I actually just did some chipping on the rifle just only in black and just a little bit here and there. So not a whole lot, just a little bit of black in some areas. Actually I forgot to mention this before but while I was cleaning up um, after I put in the uh, Peneline uh, brown on the gun and I was cleaning this up, the barrel actually broke, this barrel piece, uh, it cracked there, right where it plugs in. I was able to just put a little bit of glue on that, just some extra thin cement, and uh, it's, it's gonna be okay, I think there. If you look really closely, you could see the part where it cracked, but just gotta be careful. Um, but that's that. Everything else is just in the two-tone colors, like I said, here's a look at the shield some chipping around the edges there and here's some closer looks at the kit itself tried to keep everything mostly to the edges with a, a couple little chips just um, in open areas as well uh, on the backpack and you can see there's some there as well now all the thruster bells are on there so you can see a bit more of that purple uh, popping inside of there there under the feet and there's the logo I was talking about there on the side and then on this leg I also uh, did a stripe just a black stripe around that thigh and uh, I'm thinking of doing some uh, one other kind of hand painting kind of detail thing like that of just adding like some like just marks just to like denote the uh, number of kills it has so like you know on like sides of airplanes they'll have like um, skulls or uh, X's or something like that for like how many planes they've shot down or something like that you see on like military kits and stuff and occasionally you see them on Gunpla as well and I kind of I really like that so I wanted to add that somewhere here on this kit as well I'm not sure I thought like on the shield would be good but I'm not sure because it's rounded I want it to be a kind of square um, place. I thought maybe on the shoulder, but that's usually where we want to put some kind of marking uh, decal, like uh, like a Xeon symbol or something like that. So, or maybe on the side of the binder. I'm not sure. I'm gonna think about that and probably add that uh, a little bit later, maybe when we're doing the decals. 
Um, but anyway, that is all done and from now we're ready to start doing some decals. So I'm going to go over that in the next video. We're going to be just doing water slide decals. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it more in the next video, but basically there's different kinds of decals, um, mostly stickers, water slides, and dry transfers. Um, stickers are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll do a video on those and dry transfers later. For this kit, we're just going to be using water slides, so that's all we're going to use this time. So, Anyway, that's about it. Kit's looking pretty good. The color's alright. Uh, like I said, not, still not exactly what I had in mind, but I think it's uh, it's looking alright. So, And especially with some decals on it and with some... Uh, flat top coat I think it's going to look a lot better. I think maybe one reason why it's not really all that appealing for me at the moment is just because it's so shiny and I don't want it to be so glossy like that. So I think uh, after a couple days, once all that's done, I'm going to be liking it a lot more. But for right now, it's pretty cool. I like it. I still am pretty pleased with it. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.